If you feel like you're about to fail your microeconomics final exam next week, this is how you solve for externality problems on a graph. I'm a tutor and I'm spending the next week here covering the most important things you gotta know for your final. And if at any point you need me to teach you this entire class in one sitting, go check out my microeconomics cram kit in my bio. With that being said, the most important thing to start with on problems like this is the private market output versus the socially optimal output. For private market, look at the intersection of the marginal private benefit and the marginal private cost curves. That's gonna happen right here at, we'll say 10 units. This is the output that the private market is gonna operate at without considering external costs or benefits falling on third parties or society. Next, let's find the socially optimal output. Look at the intersection of the marginal social benefit and marginal social cost curves. It's gonna happen right here at, we'll say 12 units. Because the socially optimal output is greater than the private market output, this is a positive externality. Society wishes that the private market would output more of it. Because there's external benefits here, the vertical distance between the benefit curves, falling on third parties. Now, with that said, any externality causes welfare loss. In this case, benefit that we miss out onto society by not operating at the socially optimal point. This welfare loss is going to equate to this triangle right here because these two units that the private market should output to be socially optimal have a social cost, the red curve, less than the social benefit. So we miss out on profit and welfare by not outputting these two units the total welfare that we miss out on being the area of this triangle. Let's do the same thing now, but with negative externalities. Remember, start by pinpointing the private market output versus the socially optimal output. Private market occurs at the intersection of the marginal private costs and marginal private benefit curves, we'll say happening at seven units, and the socially optimal point is the marginal social cost curve and the marginal social benefit. All right, so that intersection point happens right here, we'll say corresponding to four units. Society wishes that four units were outputted, but the private market's outputting more at seven. Society wishes that less of this good were outputted, and in turn, this is a negative externality. There's external costs falling on third parties equating to this vertical distance. It's like the increased cost on society by the private market outputting. This means that this triangle right here is going to be the welfare loss. Why? Because between these units that shouldn't be outputted by the private market, the marginal social benefit, this blue curve, is less than the cost of society, the red curve. So society is like taking a loss on these units that shouldn't be outputted. Always look at the area between these social curves when it comes to welfare loss because welfare has to do with society. And what the government can do to resolve something like this, this could apply to positive externalities as well, is in this case, they could like tax the private market to bring up the marginal private cost to equal the marginal social cost so that the private market and society are aligned. Or with like the positive externality example before, the government might subsidize the private market to output more units. It's all about the government getting involved to make sure that the private market outputs at the socially optimal